the optimal ventilator strategy to uh, ensure uh, an optimal gas exchange, minimize ventilator-induced lung injury, and maximize the injured lung to heal is to date not yet being found. Uh, so we know that failure arises from injury to the blood gas barrier, which is induced by mechanical ventilation. The main determinants of uh, ventilator-induced lung injury are tidal over-distension, called folly trauma, the cyclic alveolar opening and closing, atelic trauma, and the increased local production and release of inflammatory mediators, as biotrauma. So um, the best way to understand the concept uh, of, um, of ventilator-induced lung injury is by the concept of the baby lung introduced by uh, Gattinoni and co-workers. When a force uh, is applied uh, by the ventilators, the fibers of the lung skeleton will develop an internal tension. This is called stress. The pressure applied by the ventilator is the transpulmonary pressure. Stress associated with the elongation of the fibers from their resting position is the strain. So, um, in RDS, the majority of the lung is collapsed and consolidated uh, with only small areas of uh, healthy lung parenchyma, known as the baby lung. The dimensions of the respiratory systems are uh, correlated uh, with the dimensions of the baby lung. And bottle trauma and volley trauma are related to the baby lung uh, by the following relationship. Uh, the transpulmonary pressure, which is equal to the specific lung elastance, multiplied by the tidal volume uh, applied to the baby lung. So it's easy to understand that uh, the smaller the baby lung, the greater his potential for ventilator-induced lung injury. So, uh, the greater potential for stress and strain. So, the, uh, the purpose of ECMO is uh, to reduce uh, all these uh, factors of uh, ventilator-induced lung injury. And uh, we will overview now these uh, measures that we can take to limit uh, alveolar strain, uh, atelic trauma, and uh, reabsorption atelectasis. The cornerstone in mechanical ventilation is low tidal volume, and it came from uh, this study uh, published by the RDS network. Uh, you all know about this study. Patients were ventilated with tidal volumes of 12 milliliters and plateau pressures of a maximum of 50 centimeters of water uh, compared to 6 milliliters of tidal volume and lower plateau pressures, 30 centimeters of water. And um, ventilation with low tidal volume resulted in 22% uh, mortality reduction and also in more ventilation-free days. Also in this prospective cohort study, more, uh, almost 500 patients with ARDS, the two-year survival was 50% greater in the patients with 100% adherence uh, to lung protective ventilation versus no uh, adherence at all. So, um, ELSO guidelines suggest that tidal vol volumes have to be low, lower than 4 milliliters per kilogram predicted body weight. However, we must be aware that uh, although patients are under ECMO and using low tidal volumes, this can, this can introduce uh, atelectasis. So, is it, it is the challenge to set the ventilator uh, right to limit uh, cyclic opening and closing, while also limiting the risk uh, of over distension. And this can be prevented by PEEP. So uh, in this meta-analysis performed by Briel, patients uh, got ventilation with high PEEP versus low PEEP. However, there was no improvement uh, in, uh, in outcome in survival when patients were ventilated with higher PEEP. However, a subgroup analysis in patients with um, more uh, hypoxemia, PF ratio lower than 200, there was a potential benefit of ventilation with high PEEP and a potential harm in the less severe hypoxemic patients uh, when they were ventilated with the high PEEP. This was also shown uh, in uh, mechanically ventilated patients uh, under ECMO. Uh, this, came, uh, this is a retrospective study in three high volume ECMO centers. And also here, um, patients who got higher PEEP during the first three days got a lower mortality during uh, ECMO. Uh, 
So ELSO guidelines um, suggest that PEEP uh, levels should be 10 centimeters of water. What about this limitation of oxygen lung toxicity? We know that a uh, uh, high fraction of inspired uh, oxygen uh, can lead to a reabsorption atelectasis. Um, and this is a nice study, uh, just 14 patients, but they were ventilated at two levels of PEEP, uh, um, around five uh, centimeters of water versus uh, almost uh, 15 centimeters of water and two levels of uh, FeO2, 60 versus uh, uh, 100%. And they looked at, at the recruited volume and uh, in the patients with, uh, who were um, breathing pure oxygen, so 100% of FeO2 and low uh, PEEP levels, there was a significant decrease in uh, recruited volume uh, comparing from the start. This was not seen in the three other uh, groups. So we can conclude that when you're in uh, breathing, um, certainly in patients with acute lung injury, then when they are breathing pure oxygen, uh, this will lead to de-recruitment and it can be prevented uh, with high PEEP. So uh, how do we set a ventilator when we are on ECMO? We reduce our FeO2 to keep our saturation above the 85% and uh, we, uh, we limit also our respiration ratio and just to keep our uh, pH and PCO2 within normal ranges. Obviously, uh, the sweep gas will help us with that. What about the driving pressure? The driving pressure is a hot item. Uh, driving pressure is the plateau pressure minus uh, the PEEP. It is has to be shown that uh, it is the only parameter who is the best predictor in hospital mortality for ARDS patients. In this nice study by Amato, um, patients were um, observed and we looked at driving, high driving pressures versus uh, high uh, plateau pressures and differences of PEEP. And the resembling between uh, A versus B shows that there was a higher mortality when there were higher plateau pressures and higher driving pressures. On the other hand, there was a protective effect of higher PEEP when there was a decrease in uh, driving pressure. So driving pressure was the only uh, predictor of uh, risk of death. Uh, a cutoff value for the driving pressure for um, increased mortality is uh, 15 centimeters of water. Here is shown that uh, an increase in just one standard deviation increases mortality significant. Um, also on the patients uh, who are ventilated under ECMO driving pressure is important. Uh, here is a meta-analysis including nine studies, more than 500 pa patients with RDS and ECMO, overall mortality around 35% and uh, patients uh, who survived in orange had, um, had, had on the beginning of uh, ECMO a much lower driving pressures than the non-survivors. So um, also here there was an independent association with in-hospital mortality. What is the rationale to use this low driving pressure? We know that the um, ventilator produces energy and this energy is transferred from the ventilator to the lung. So at each breath, this energy is related with a lot of dissipation of energy, inducing heat and even lung tissue damage. So um, this is related to the driving pressure and the respiratory rate. And with ECMO, it is possible to reduce this driving pressure by limitation of our tidal volume and plateau pressure and by increase of our PEEP. And we can decrease our respiratory rate by increasing our sweep gas flow. What about our motor ventilation? Till date, it is not been studied. In the early phase, uh, a pressure control ventilation is advocated. However, we know that patients who do not have the cyclic uh, uh, contraction of their diaphragm, if they have a prolonged pressure control uh, ventilation, um, they will get severe diaph diaphragm uh, atrophy and it also will lead to increased duration of ventilatory support. So a pressure assisted mode is um, desired as soon as possible. Possible. 
What about uh, air pressure release ventilation? This is a ventilation mode that was introduced uh, three decades ago, but uh, nowadays uh, everybody is talking about it. That is a, a ventilation mode that, uh, allow, that gives uh, continuous positive air with pressure with uh, only a brief intermittent release uh, phase. So spontaneous breathing is uh, possible throughout uh, the whole uh, time and it can have uh, an increased distribution of ventilation to the dependent lung regions. Uh, it can have a, a good effect, a positive effect on the workload and also increase the systemic blood flow. And this was uh, nicely shown in the study by Zhu and co-workers. It's a randomized controlled trial in uh, 100 and uh, almost 140 patients with RDS. Patients uh, were mechanically ventilated less than 48 hours and were randomly uh, assigned to the ARP APRV group or the lung protective ventilation. And with uh, APRV, there was a significant improvement in uh, hypoxemia, um, also in the respiratory system compliance and uh, decrease in uh, plateau pressures. But there also was um, an um, decrease in the duration of the ventilation support as also the ICU stay. So APRV can be uh, a nice uh, ventilation mode during ECMO. What about proning? Uh, we know that prone uh, will uh, recruit the dorsal lung regions, that it will facilitate um, lung drainage with a subsequent improvement in um, in oxygenation and also it uh, will limit uh, tidal over distension uh, in the ventral uh, segments. And this was shown by Guérin in this multicenter trial where patients who got uh, at least 16 hours of prone ventilation had uh, better survival than patients who were in the supine group. So what about proning during ECMO? Um, possible indications can be when uh, there is a failure in attempts of, uh, to wean from VV ECMO after more than seven days under VV ECMO. Uh, refractory hypoxemia could be another indication uh, despite 100% of FeO2 on the ventilator and on the ECMO. And injurious um, ventilator settings, meaning plateau pressures both 32 centimeters of water despite lung protective ventilations. And this was performed. Um, patients uh, were prone uh, with after they had the previous mentioned indications. And after 24 hours of proning, they got a statistically significant improvement in PF uh, ratios. It is also important to mention that there were no adverse events uh, during proning. So, um, how to set our ventilator during ECMO? Um, it is best uh, to set the ventilator to allow the lung rest. We should limit alveolar strain by limiting our tidal volumes. Pressure control ventilation with a tight uh, limitation of our plateau pressure. Um, we should limit our uh, respiration ratio by meaning of the sweep gas flow. We should provide a lung recruitment uh, by uh, giving a PEEP level of 10 centimeters of water. We should limit uh, our um, FeO2 and uh, a saturation of 85% uh, is enough. And the ventilation mode, well, I should say, uh, let the patient breathe as soon as possible uh, spontaneously uh, since uh, this will have a positive effect uh, on the diaphragm. I thank you.